Good evening. Yeah, this is going to be a fantastic event, number 17. Very definitely an honor to be here today. Uh, as an employee of NBC News, ergo Comcast, it is certainly an honor here to, again, think of the diverse perspectives that are so important in the industry that we're part of, and the cultivation of events and relations such as this is very, very important. And it's certainly a privilege as well and an honor for me to be able to introduce our guest speaker for this evening, which is Secretary Gary Locke. But since I have the mic for two seconds, an unfortunate story to tell you about, and that is, well, as Secretary Locke's wife knows quite well, journalism can mean you're swept off at a moment's notice. Such is the case today, all of you got ripped off. You were one story away from Ann Curry standing right here. But then, as you know, the United States' most wanted man was found. Now, Ann is reporting in Pakistan today, doing the good work she normally does. Now, back to Secretary Locke. When he addressed APAX at this 15th annual Gal Awards dinner, he delivered a message that certainly resonated with many of you who were here, and it resonated all through the Asian American Pacific Islander community as well around the country. Now, if you remember what he said at that time, he said, it matters who is at the table helping to set policy, that everybody is responsible for training young men, young women, to be in positions of policy influence. Now, Secretary Locke said the internship and fellowship programs at Apex should be used to break through barriers perceived and real to reach new milestones. Now, Apex is very fortunate to have him here again tonight in one of his very last speaking engagements as Secretary of Commerce before he makes yet another milestone, he has so many of them, as you know, of his own in his long and distinguished career as the first Chinese-American ambassador to China. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of Commerce, Gary Locke. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, we're, we're behind schedule. We've got to keep going. We've got to go fast here. So, well, thank you very much, Richard, for the very, very nice remarks. And it's really a pleasure to be with all of you here and want to thank the Asia Pacific American Institute for Congressional Studies, APEX, for inviting me. And it's really great to see so many friends uh, in a room uh, and to see great friends like Congressman Norman Netta and members of the Congressional Asian Pacific uh, American Caucus. And uh, it's also a pleasure to, to serve as the co-chair of the White House Initiative on Asian Pac Americans and Pacific Islanders, and especially this month, because uh, AAPI Heritage Month, May, gives us a chance to take a break from the long hours and the hectic lives that we all lead to reflect on and celebrate our community and our legacy. As many of you know, May was chosen as our Heritage Month because it coincides with two important milestones in Asian Pacific American history. The arrival of the, in the U.S. of the first Japanese uh, immigrants in 1843, May 1843. The second milestone is the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, May 1869, thanks to the Chinese laborers who helped build one of the greatest U.S. technological feats in the 19th century. And I'm proud to say that those Chinese immigrants came from my home area of Toisan in Guangdong province in southern China. That's why I am, cannot speak this Mandarin stuff at all. I mean, 
Cantonese and Toisanese are radically different from Mandarin. But today and throughout this entire month, we commemorate the courage and the contributions of these early Asian Pacific Americans who made the voyage to America. Can you imagine back in the 1800s making a month-long voyage in these ships, you know, getting seasick and everything else, and, but, but you know, going to an absolutely strange land by sea. These early Asian Pacific Americans who set up lives here against unbelievable odds and quite frankly against a lot of hardship, against a lot of discrimination and even persecution. Asian Pacific Americans who planted the seed for generations to come. And now in each of our families there remains a thread of their stories because each of our families follows that long line of sacrifice, of strength, of perseverance, and of determination. Now, a lot of you know the, the story of our family. In the late 1800s, my grandfather came to America as a teenager and worked as a houseboy for a family in the state capital of Olympia, Washington, all in exchange for English lessons. He swept the floors, washed clothes and dishes, and cooked meals in exchange for English lessons. He went back to China, had a family, came back to the United States and worked and sent the money back to China to support his family. And that's where my father and a lot of my aunts and uncles were born. So then later, my grandfather brought the whole family over. And my father then served in the United States Army during World War II as part of the Normandy invasion and the liberation of Berlin. A hundred years later, I was elected as the governor of the state of Washington, the first Asian American governor on the U.S. mainland. And I said at, the, at, my inaugural, at my inaugural address that I'm moving into the governor's mansion one mile from where my grandfather worked as a houseboy 100 years later, that it took our family 100 years to move one mile only in America. But my family story is the story of all Asian Pacific Americans. It's a story of all Americans because we are all immigrants, whether first generation or 10th generation, whether our ancestors came from Asia, Europe, Latin America, or Africa, and whether our ancestors came here voluntarily or involuntarily as slaves. Except for the Native Americans, we are all immigrants and we need to continue to remember that immigrant heritage, that immigrant experience, and that America is a freedom, is a land of freedom, hope, and opportunity that attracts people from around the world. And we need to celebrate that diversity of opinion, thought, and culture, and religion. It is the strength of America. And so during this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, we're called to honor the pioneers, the laborers, the entrepreneurs, the veterans, the trailblazers, all who struggled and fought to open doors of opportunity to new generations. And today, Asian Pacific Americans are one of the fastest growing and the most diverse populations in the U.S. Look around this room. And it's also clear that we've become leaders in our country, playing outsized roles in society and its economy. Asian Americans, Asian Pacific Islanders have achieved top positions in government, in finance, in business, in academia, and in the arts, and in entertainment. To cite just one example, AAPI businesses account for 50% of all minority workers at minority firms. That's the highest percentage of any minority group. But that outsized influence in business and other areas has not yet extended to politics. Consider the fact that although U.S. residents of Asian Pacific Islander descent make up 5.6 percent of the population, they only account for 2 percent of the members of the United States Congress. And you can find similar disparities in state legislatures all across this land. We've got to do better. And that change has to occur within our own communities. We've got to change the mindset where getting involved in government or in politics is somehow less noble or useful than becoming a doctor or an engineer. 
The fact is that if the AAPI community wants action on the issues it cares about, it's got to be at the table where the decisions are being made that affect all of us. And this is a job for everyone in this room. We've got to set expectations high and help people understand that the need for more talented and engaged public servants starts with us. And we depend on one another for support. And that's why we need organizations like APEX. And for the last 17 years, APEX has helped build the political pipeline for AAPIs through their congressional fellowship programs and their leadership academy for elected officials. As was mentioned, I've just been nominated by President Obama to be his new ambassador to China. But I could not... But I could not have done it alone, whether running for office, whether running for governor. I could not have done it alone. The support of the Asian Pacific Islander community in my home state of Washington, but indeed throughout the United States, has made it possible for me to continue to succeed. Support like people, from people like Norma Netta, Bob Matsui, Mike Honda, and so many of you in the room. And I know that if my father was still alive, and he just passed away a few months ago, and he was so proud when the President swore me in as Secretary of Commerce, and he was proud of that day. But I know that if he were alive, seeing his son represent America in, in, in his ancestral homeland would be perhaps his proudest moment. Let my story serve as proof that great things are possible in this land of freedom, hope, and opportunity. We need to encourage our children to have the biggest dreams. And then we have to all work together to make sure that all those dreams can come true. Thank you very much, and keep up the great work that APEX does every single year. Thank you.